Hey, what's up? This is Harry Wagner from Harry Situations. And today I wanna to talk to you all about trailers and towing. So I've owned this trailer for about 14 years, and I'll be honest, I've made a lot of mistakes along the way. You don't need a special license to tow a trailer like this. And there's a lot of things they don't tell you when you buy the trailer. I want you to learn the easy way instead of the hard way how I did. So we're gonna go over how to hook the tow rig up to the trailer, loading this vehicle on the trailer safely, and some tips for driving down the road to make sure you get to your destination in one piece. You'll notice both of these vehicles are on 37 inch Nitto tires. The Jeep's on trail grapplers and my Ram is on the new recon grappler. These tires go just as good down the road as they do on the trail, but sometimes I still like to tow the Jeep. You know, if I'm going somewhere far from home like Moab or the King of the Hammers in Johnson Valley, I'll usually tow. That gives me the security that if I break something, I can still get it home. Nitto gives us the ability to do all of those things and more. They don't make trailer tires, but they do make tires for just about everything else out there, from tow rigs to wreck vehicles, off-road vehicles, drift cars, daily drivers, you name it. This video is actually brought to you by Nitto Tires. If you like what we're doing here, please consider subscribing to the Driving Line channel and make sure to like. So the first step is to hook the tow rig up to the trailer by backing it up. Now, this is much easier these days with backup cameras like my truck has. In the old days, you didn't have these. What I would do then was either use a spotter and or try and square up the trailer in the mirrors. So now you don't want to go back too far. You risk smashing your tailgate or your bumper into the trailer, but you can just kind of get close. One thing I've learned, whether it's doing recovery, whether it's hooking up your trailer, whatever you're doing, Take your time. Most of the mistakes that I've made come from being in a rush. So I just went and looked. I've got about three feet I need to go back. I'm gonna milk on the ground at a mark and then just sort of use that as a reference point back up. Now, if you do have a spotter, you wanna establish hand signals beforehand. So you know if stop is this or this. Another thing to remember, I learned this from Nina Barlow. You don't want T-Rex arms. So you don't wanna back someone up like this. Big movements, hands out where the person that's driving can see them is a good suggestion. Another thing, when we get to this part where we're hooking the truck and the trailer together, your spotter or that person that's helping you, they might wanna jump in here. My recommendation is to have one person do all of this step. That way there's no confusion about, oh, did you put the foot up? Did I remember to put the foot up? I've ripped the foot off my trailer. And again, that was a function of being in a hurry, poor communication. So all of that can be avoided if one person does all of this. You know you needed to do every step. So we'll start by lowering the trailer onto the ball. You'll notice that I've got a lot of throw on the jack. You can get it closer. There's pins here in the foot so you can lower it down. Uh, now, if you have it too low, I've got another truck that I use to tow this trailer that's lower to the ground. Sometimes I run out of travel, but it's not quite on the hitch yet. So I like to make sure I've got plenty of throw on the foot. Then once it's on the ball, we can go all the way up. Now we can take out this pin. We're gonna put the foot all the way up so that it doesn't catch on anything while we're going down the road, rip off. I'm gonna close this hitch now. This is a bulldog style hitch. Put the pin in. Next, we're gonna put on the safety chains. You wanna cross the chains. The reason for these are, if this ball comes off the hitch or the hitch comes out, these chains are gonna catch the trailer and keep it from digging into the ground. So we wanna make sure those are crossed. We also wanna make sure that they're long enough that when you're at full lock, they don't bind up. There's enough length here that when I'm turned, this one is plenty long. We've also got our breakaway controller on here. So if this does become disconnected, the trailer brakes will engage. We've got our wiring. This is a seven pin plug. Pretty typical if you're using trailer brakes. Uh, if you don't have trailer brakes, you might just have a four pin plug that has lights. So you go all the way in and then that notch hooks on the top so it won't come out. 
We want to route this so it doesn't drag on the ground or pinch or catch on anything. Once we have the wiring hooked up, we want to double check and make sure that our brake lights and turn signals and running lights all work. Hit the brakes. Okay. And the turn signal. All right, we're good to go. Nice job. The next step is going to be loading our Jeep onto the trailer. This trailer doesn't have a beaver tail, which in some instances is helpful because you have more ground clearance. It's not going to drag in the back, but it also makes it a little more of a challenge to load lowered vehicles. In the case of the Jeep, it's not a problem, but if you had a car you were trying to load on here, it might be too steep of an angle. In those instances, I'll actually put the foot back down with the trailer hooked up to the vehicle, crank it down to lower the angle a little bit. It's like a poor man's tilt deck, but that's helped me out in some times where I've had a vehicle not as tall as the Jeep. So these have hooks. They go right into the rail here. There's, they're adjustable depending on how wide your vehicle is. You wanna make the width of the ramps line up with the track width of the vehicle you're loading. You don't wanna lose these. So I'm gonna put the pin back in. I'm gonna put it in the middle because I know there's not gonna be a tire there. Now we're ready to load the Jeep onto the trailer. So we wanna make sure we're squared up left to right. Our ramps are the appropriate width and we wanna just take our time and go nice and slow. Generally, you want to go until you see the back of the tow vehicle start to dip down. That's when you have appropriate tongue weight. General rule of thumb is you want 60% of the weight forward of the axles on the trailer and 40% behind. So a little bit of tongue weight is good. It'll keep the rear end of the truck planted. It'll make you go down the road nice and even. But if you have too much tongue weight, then the front end of the tow vehicle can get real light you won't have a lot of rear suspension because it'll already be on the bump stops, so you want to avoid that too. 60-40, remember. So the next step is to tie down our vehicle to the trailer. You can either use chains and binders, or my preference is to use straps. So my dad was always a chain and binder guy. I find they're really heavy. I've, he had a metal deck trailer. It sounded like the ghost of Christmas past was here every time we had to load something up. They are strong, there's no doubt about that. More common these days are to use straps. In particular, I, I like Max tie downs. Colin McLemore over there is a true off-road enthusiast. I like everything he makes, super high quality. They make straps in a variety of different lengths. Uh, my preference is to err on the side of being too long. You can always tie off the excess. If they're too short, then you're kind of out of luck. They make a few different styles of straps too. So you can see this strap here. The hook is integrated into it, swings around the axle like so. This style here, the, the choker is actually not part of the strap. It's, I think these are a little easier to sort of finagle into place and then you just hook up the strap like so. These basically operate like a giant ratchet strap and they operate on the principle of friction. So you wanna pull some of the excess when you tighten this down, but not too much. You need at least a few wraps on here when you tighten your strap because that's, that's what's holding it in place. So we've got a short end here with the hook. This is gonna to go to the trailer. We've got these tie down points here. The longer end, will go to the vehicle. I'm gonna wrap this around the axle and then back to itself. You wanna tie down the axles. That'll allow the, the chassis and the suspension to move as you encounter bumps. You don't wanna tie down the chassis. The reason being is you can get these nice and tight, suck down the suspension, but you're going down the road. If the suspension compresses more, that strap can loosen and it can break under shock load or it can even come off, which we certainly want to avoid. That's why we go to the axles instead of to the chassis. 
And of course, you never want to strap to things like steering components or suspension components like the shocks or the coils when you're strapping down your vehicle. My trailer has these D-rings on it, but it also has stake pockets all around the side. If you need more flexibility in where you're connecting to, uh, Max makes these convenient little products. You can just put it through the stake pocket, and then this will allow you a, a point you can connect to just about anywhere around the trailer. Super handy. There's a lot of discussion about whether you should cross your straps or not. I do more as a function of just being practical. It allows more length to be out. These straps get pretty short in the back here if I don't cross them. Um, really, you're just securing the vehicle fore and aft. You don't have to cross because there's not a lot of concern about the vehicle on the trailer moving side to side. So Max actually suggests that you just make your strap straight in the front and in the back. I cross them, hasn't caused me any harm, but it's not their preferred method. You may have seen heavy equipment tied down to a trailer with chains and binders at the chassis, but that's because they don't have a suspension to compress like an off-road vehicle like this Jeep does. So we're gonna go to the axles. In this case, the packaging with the, the coil on this side, there's not a lot of exposed axle tube to connect to. So I typically actually go around this control arm here and then I'll take up some of the slack, but not all of it, because I need to get a few wraps here. Generally in the front, I'll start just sort of by snugging them up, and then I'll do the same in the rear, and I go to all four corners and tighten them up once I've done my final check. So now we're gonna connect these straps to the rear axle. I've got this big fuel tank in here. Like in the front, I'm gonna go around these lower control arms just to make sure, you can see the brake lines here going out to the caliper. I wanna make sure I don't crush those. There's no need to get too dressed up in your Sunday best before you're loading something on the trailer. So our front straps, we have snug, but not super tight. I'm gonna tighten up these rear ones, then I'll go snug the front ones back up again. You always wanna make sure this is down. That's the lock position. This is just a little cam gear. You want both of these locked in to make sure it doesn't loosen up. Now with the straps crossed, we don't have a ton of excess. So I'm just gonna put this right here so it doesn't flap around. If you add longer, you can tie it off. Max includes little Velcro wraps that you can use. You don't want this stuff flapping around or you risk, you know, it can fray or catch on something. You wanna avoid that. So this one, isn't quite going all the way down. So you can see there's just this gear here, this ratchet and how this operates. You can see that it's not seated all the way down in the bottom here. And this one is up against the tooth. So we actually wanna turn this a little further. That's seated all the way now. And so did this one. Now it's locked. We don't have to worry about this coming loose. With the rear all snug down, now I can tighten the fronts. I've got a little more excess here, but still not enough to worry about, so. I'm just gonna route it through here. Once all four corners are tight, we're ready to go. That's not going anywhere. Ram owners, you are in luck. Finally, a reason to put your tow mirrors out without getting made fun of. You wanna make sure your mirrors are adjusted so you can see the, the trailer wheels, take turns nice and wide, kind of like you would do in a semi-truck. If you turn too sharp, that trailer has to follow you, so it, it kind of cuts the corner and you risk going over curbs or hitting things. This truck has an integrated brake controller. The Jeep's not too heavy, so I don't have to turn the brakes up on the trailer too high, but the heavier the load, like if I have my Ford, then I'll turn up this controller. If I'm towing an empty trailer, I turn it way down. Otherwise, the brakes lock up on the trailer long before the truck comes to a stop. You wanna leave plenty of space in front of you. Your braking distances will be increased when you have a trailer behind you just because of the extra weight. After I load up, I'll usually stop and fuel up the truck and I'll just walk around the trailer, check and make sure all the straps are tight. Everything where I connected things is the way it should be and that there aren't any issues. That's not going anywhere. If you're on a long trip, every time you stop, you wanna do this. You wanna check, make sure the straps are tight, 
Also, you can check, make sure the hubs aren't too hot. You wanna feel the hubs on the trailer. A hot hub could be a sign that like, maybe it's about to fail or it doesn't have any grease in it. So just make sure you're mindful of all these things while you're towing. When you're driving your truck, if you have the ability to put it in tow haul mode or you have an exhaust brake, I definitely recommend using those tools when you're towing. It'll just make things that much easier. Remember to take your time, make wide, gentle turns, leave plenty of room for the people in front of you, and you shouldn't have any problems. Now, if you had had some problems towing, share those horror stories with us below in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching Driving Line. If you guys like this video, consider subscribing to our channel so you'll never miss any of the content we create here. Whether you're into trucks, Jeeps, imports, domestic vehicles, or anything in between, we are here to fuel your passion. So hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys next time.